Here are five project ideas that you can do right now to level up your hands-on skills, add to your portfolio, and include them onto your resume so you can stand out from the competition. I promise you, you will not be disappointed, but you do have to put in the effort to make it happen. These projects can get pretty complicated very quickly. You want to stick to the end because the last project will make hiring managers extremely excited. Starting with project number one, building a malware analysis lab. This project is quite easy to do. I mean, there are a lot of tutorials out there. In fact, I created a video which I will link demonstrating how you can get started with building your own malware analysis lab. The purpose of this project is to showcase your interest in identifying how a particular file, whether that be malicious or not, work at a very high level. Having a malware analysis lab can be extremely beneficial to you, especially when you're trying to identify additional IOCs, indicators of compromise. So you can pivot during an investigation and hopefully reveal additional information. Understanding how to build one can allow you to have that conversation with potential employers because everyone loves to have a malware analysis capability. If you can build a malware analysis lab and perform both static and dynamic analysis on a piece of malware without using online tools, that will really impress employers. Your objective, install both Remnux and Flare VM and have those systems ready to go. Consider performing basic static analysis and dynamic analysis. If you aren't too sure how to do that, there are many videos out there that will teach you. Remember, you just need to put in the effort to make it happen. Project number two, identify and remediate vulnerabilities. You can spin up a virtual machine using Metasploitable. For those that don't know what Metasploitable is, it is essentially an intentional vulnerable system that you can use to train your red teaming skills, such as exploitation. But in this case, identifying and remediating vulnerabilities. It is extremely important that you know how to communicate effectively in the field of cybersecurity. You must possess the skill of relaying information and breaking down and explaining technical concepts to a non-technical audience. You need to remember that cybersecurity is a business function and is often an afterthought, which is why it is important to break down why the business should care. And by identifying and remediating vulnerabilities, you can do just that, and I'll show you how. Your objective, spin up Metasploitable and use either Tenable Nessus or even Nmap to scan that target machine. You want to imagine that this machine is a client of yours and it is exposed to the internet. At the end, you must create a report providing them with your findings and how one should remediate the vulnerabilities. Be sure to lay out the why, the risks. Remember, the decision makers likely doesn't care if port 3389 is open or might not even understand what that means. Project number three, IDS slash Zeek network monitoring. This project is great because not only will you understand how signatures are created and used to alert on suspicious network traffic, but it can also help you when you are handed a PCAP packet capture to investigate. Utilizing an IDS intrusion detection system, such as Snort or Suricata, can quickly help you identify potential suspicious traffic within a given PCAP. And Zeek can help you break down the PCAP into pieces that are easily digestible and allow for correlation. This shouldn't be a difficult project to set up, and I have created videos on how you can get started with Zeek and Snort. So you can watch that and follow along if needed. Your objective, spin up either Snort or Suricata and Zeek. Configure these tools to monitor your network traffic and see what it outputs. You then want to have Snort or Suricata read a known malicious PCAP that you can download from malware traffic analysis and then see what signatures are provided. Next, use Zeek to read and parse that same PCAP and learn how to utilize Zeek Cut. 
which is their tool to analyze the traffic. Project number four, set up a honeypot. Honeypots are one of those things that lights up a potential employer. On paper, it is amazing. But in reality, if an organization is not mature enough, it doesn't really matter. But that's just my opinion and I'll digress. For those that don't know, a honeypot is essentially a host that has a bunch of attractive data or ports that are opened to collect data from potential attackers. The purpose of a honeypot is a great way to identify attackers by using what is called cyber deception. Have something so good that it makes it hard to resist. For example, a text file named passwords or an exposed application with default credentials. If you create a honeypot, believe me, you'll have people talking, but it can get dangerous very quickly if you do not set it up properly. Meaning if you allow external access towards the honeypot and your network is not properly segmented, there are various honeypots that you can spin up that contain software to allow you to log and monitor traffic. These are great, especially for those attack maps or what we like to call pew pew maps for visualization. Extremely useless in the real world, but it's nice to look at. Your objective, spin up a honeypot of your choosing. I would recommend utilizing the cloud to perform this action. That way it is less risky for you because again, if you set it up locally and your network is flat, good luck. Project number five, Waza to soar implementation. Saving the best project for last. If you can spin this up and get it working properly, you will definitely have people talking. I'll be creating a step-by-step -step series on how you can build this for free here on YouTube. The purpose of this lab is to showcase your knowledge on how to set up, configure, and ingest logs to Waza and then utilize SOAR to perform some kind of automation, which in the real world, not a lot of SOCs have that capability yet. I know, it's quite shocking. Now, imagine you, new to this field, sitting across and doing an interview, and they see SOAR experience. They will 100% question you on it, but because you built it out and integrated the solution in your own lab, hopefully, you will be able to talk about it and impress them. Your objective, spin up Waza and have at least one agent reporting in. Integrate a free SOAR platform such as Shuffle and perform simple automation such as data enrichment. To recap the projects, project number one, building a malware analysis lab. Your objective is to install both Remnux and Flare VM and have those systems ready to go. Consider performing both basic static analysis and dynamic analysis. Project number two, identify and remediate vulnerabilities. Your objective, spin up Metasploitable and use either Tenable Nessus or even Nmap to scan that target machine. Remember to imagine that this machine is a client of yours and it is exposed to the internet. At the end, you must create a report providing them with your recommendations and findings. How would one remediate this vulnerability and why should they care? Project number three, IDS slash Zeek network monitoring. Your objective, spin up either Snort or Suricata and Zeek. You want to configure these tools to monitor your local network traffic and see what it outputs. You then want to have Snort or Suricata read a known malicious PCAP that you can download from malware traffic analysis. And then you want to see what kind of signatures it outputs. Afterwards, feed the same PCAP into Zeek and utilize one of their applications like Zeek Cut to analyze that traffic. Project number four, set up a honeypot. Your objective, spin up a honeypot of your choosing. Again, I would recommend utilizing the cloud to perform this action. That way it is less risky for you. And lastly, project number five, Waza to soar implementation. Your objective, spin up Waza and have at least one agent checking in. Integrate a free soar platform such as Shuffle and perform simple automation 
like data enrichment. If you do not have one already, I highly suggest you create your own blog using free websites or even GitHub and document all of these projects. You want to be able to showcase your work, especially any reports that you create, such as the vulnerability report. If you are a student or a professional that wants to transition into cybersecurity, I want you to know that I offer free mentorship on my site with no strings attached. On there, you will also see products that I've personally created in which you can download to help guide you along this journey. These products include resume and cover letter templates, bookmarks, a one-year roadmap on how to get started in cybersecurity, and a list of interview questions to help you in your next interview. Also, as a sneak peek, I am in the process of creating a SOC course where there will be over 20 hands-on labs and multiple projects that you can put onto your resume. You can join the waitlist if you choose to do so. My mission here is to help you get to where you want to be. And that is it for the video, and I hope you found it informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.